All right, hello everybody. We're gonna to talk today about um, something that's called point mutations. Now, previously we've talked about chromosomal mutations. We've talked about non-disjunction where you might have an extra chromosome or missing chromosomes. We've talked about deletion of part of a chromosome. That's gonna be in my video the whole time, yay. Um, we've talked about um, inversions where part of a chromosome completely flips over. We've talked about translocations where part of a chromosome breaks away and attaches onto a different chromosome. So those are chromosomal mutations. This is point mutations. Point mutations are more about the A's, T's, C's, and G's. And when I say point, I'm talking about a tiny, tiny little section of a chromosome. You could not see it when you looked at a karyotype. It would not be obvious. All right, so what are examples of point mutations? So first of all, we just got to be clear, what is a gene? Um, back in the day, we came up with something that was called the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. That was Beetle and Tatum, and they received the Nobel Prize in 1958. It turns out it's a little too simplistic. Not all genes are for enzymes, not all genes are for proteins, and not all genes are for polypeptides. However, it's a good starting place. For the most part, at our level, if you think a gene equals a protein, you're off to a good start. There are genes that are regulatory. There's all kinds of things that, that genes do, but we'll go right now with one gene, one protein, and we're good to go. All right, so mutations. A mutation is a change in the DNA that affects the change in protein structure and therefore the physiology. And there's two major types. There's one type that are called the point mutations where one DNA repl is replaced by another. And then there's the frame shift mutation. This is where DNA bases are inserted or deleted and you're going to find out that that is hugely important. So take a look just for one example here at a, a DNA mutation for sickle cell anemia. The wild type, remember wild type means the more common version of the gene, um, CTT, and it produces an mRNA that's GAA, and then the hemoglobin has glutamine in it. Um, in the sickle cell hemoglobin, there's one letter change. There's one letter change out of three billion letters. One letter is not correct. Um, there's an A instead of a T. And so that causes a different, um, that causes a different protein to be, uh, sorry, a different amino acid. And that changes the shape of the protein and it ends up causing something like sickle cell anemia. Lots of times it's possible for one mutation to not have any impact at all. But sometimes in the case of, um, as in the case of, um, sickle cell anemia, one tiny point mutation, and that was it. All right, so silent is what I was referencing. In this case, the substitution changes a codon to another codon for the same amino acid. So let's take a look at the diagram. So here's the wild type, and these are the amino acids that they're supposed to have. Here's the Here's the, um, the change, and typically silent mutations take place in the third letter. So of the codon. So let me give you an example. So let's say, now I'm just doing this off the top of my head, but let's say AAA is for lysine. Um, AAG might also be for lysine. AAC might also be for lysine. For the most part, in the codons, the part, um, if it's the third letter that gets changed, that's often a silent mutation, meaning it doesn't affect which amino acid um, is attached. So take a look at this one. The third letter is changed. There's an A instead of a G, which produces a U instead of a C but it still produces the same protein. So we've got methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, and glycine, um, and it's the same as the way it was supposed to be, so we call that a silent mutation. All right, in the next one, we call this a missense. The substitution changes a codon to a codon for a different amino acid. So in this case, we have a T, and notice that it's the first letter. That's usually more dramatic than the third letter. Um, in this case, we have a T um, instead of a C, and so the third or the fourth amino acid is serine instead of glycine. So that's called a missense point mutation. And then the last one is called a nonsense point mutation. And the way I always help students is I go like this. Stop your nonsense, children. Um, I don't know if that helps, but 
nonsense mutations cause a stop sign. So think, stop your nonsense, stop your nonsense. Um, and that leads to a, a premature stop signal. So in this case, um, the A was, it, it, we have an A mutation instead of a T and it creates a stop signal. So notice none of the amino acids that were supposed to come after that methionine are there. They're all absent because it's a premature stop signal. So that's nonsense. All right, the last type that we're gonna talk about are the frame shift mutations. And I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on this, but it won't take us long. A frame shift is when we either insert or delete an, an amino, or insert or delete a nucleotide, and that screws up the order of the codons. Um, the codons are three letters at a time, and if you insert one, then you screw up the framing. That's what they call it, the framing of the codons. So it says the reading frame of the ribosome is altered so that all amino acids downstream from the insertion or deletion are altered. So take a look at this example, and then I'll give you another example. So here we inserted... Um, it says A is missing. I'm not sure what that meant. Sorry, give me a second. I should have looked at it more carefully. Maybe these are two examples. The A, oh, oh, the U is missing. There's no A and A was deleted. Now I get it. And A was deleted. So there's no U here. There's supposed to be a U here. So it's supposed to go U, U, U and code for phenylalanine. But now instead of U, 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 the, the third U was removed. So now the third letter, U, U, it scoots over and it's G because there's the G. This U is missing. So now UUG codes for leucine, and then um, the next three letters, instead of being GGC, they're going to scooch over by a letter, and it's going to be GCU, and now it's alanine, and we miss our stop signal, and it's utter chaos. Everything after the insertion or deletion is completely altered. So let me give you an example that I think your eyeballs maybe can follow a little bit better. I've got a sentence that involves just three letter words. So I'm trying to um, show you an analogy of reading three letters at a time, like the mRNA is read. So it says the fat cat ate the rat, really simple three letter words. So now if we substitute a letter Z, so instead of an F, we have a letter Z and we substitute it. Now it says the Zat cat ate the rat. That's a substitution. And in that case, um, it may, have changed the amino acid, but still the rest of the protein has the right amino acids. Um, maybe it was silent. Maybe it probably not because it was the first letter. It probably wasn't silent, but whatever. Um, maybe the, the protein isn't devastated. Maybe. But now take a look at the insertion and the deletion example. So it's supposed to say the fat cat ate the rat, but now I've deleted the F. No, I'm sorry. I've inserted in front of the F, I've inserted a Z. So now look at it's being read three letters at a time. So now it's the, and now the Z, it's ZFA is the next three letters. So I got the FA, but now the T gets pushed over to the next reading frame. So TCA is the next reading frame. And then TAT is the next reading frame. ETH is the next reading frame. And ERA is the next reading frame. Everything after that. So now our sentence, the Zavatika Tat F era. It doesn't make any sense, right? We've scooched over the reading frame. And so now everything is nonsense after that. Um, same thing with a deletion. So in this example, we deleted the F. So now instead of FAT being a reading frame, it's AT and the following C is the reading frame. So ATC and now the next ATA, ATA, TET, it screws up the reading frame for everything afterwards. We screws up the stop signs, everything gets screwed up. That's a frame shift mutation. All right. And then the last one, um, a frame shift mutation is called an, this one is called an immediate nonsense. Remember, nonsense means stop. So the reading frame of the ribosome is altered so that a stop codon is introduced prematurely. So in this case, we added an extra whatever and we created this nonsense. All right. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I thought I was done. I'm not done. Let me back up. Hold on. Sorry. I thought I was done. I'm not. Okay. So immediate nonsense. The reading frame of the ribosome is altered so that a stop codon is introduced 
um, prematurely. And finally, sorry, um, is something called the limited effect. This is fascinating. Um, the reading frame is restored when the insertions and deletions occur in multiples of three. Imagine my story, the fat cat ate the rat. What if we took out the, the second word, the? So now it's the fat cat ate rat. So one amino acid is screwed up, but the, the rest of it still worked, um, still worked okay. So that's what a um, that's what a limited effect is. If the, what's being added or removed occurs in groups of three, its total um, impact on the rest of the protein is lessened. All right, everybody, limited effect. Let me know if you have any questions.